A year ago in Rio, these five women, the final five, made a lot of great gold medal news. One of them, Ali Raisman, is making more news today, and we'll have more on that later. But they're here in Anaheim, California, to watch the search for the next four who will represent the United States at the World Championships in October. One of them could be Reagan Smith. The next logical step for her is to win a national championship tonight. NBC Sports is proud to present the 2017 PNG Gymnastics Championships. Another gorgeous day in Southern California. The gymnastics should look likewise. It's the Honda Center on Stanley Cup Way. A big crowd has assembled to watch all four rotations today. And sitting atop the list is Reagan Smith after the first night of competition. And she has a very big lead of 1.3 over the rest of the field. The others search for consistency that could lead to a silver or a bronze medal, and hopefully one of those spots to represent the United States at the Worlds. There's Reagan Smith, 1.3, and then Jordan Childs at 1.5, Margaretta Frazier, and Trinity Thomas with the fifth spot. Hi, everybody. Al Trowick surrounded by gold medalists, Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, Andrea Joyce is with us as well. Good thing or a, a, a weird thing to have such a big lead coming into this? I think it's a great thing. You know, she's she's been in a competition under pressure, so obviously there's a little bit of pressure for her. She wants to win that national title, especially going into the World Championship soon, but she has been so rock solid here all week long. I don't see any issues. Okay, Tim, Riley McCusker had one of the greatest nights of her life. It was unbelievable. And if you had seen her in training prior to the competitions, you would have been no way that that could happen. But she really delivered. She has tremendous qualities. She just has to make sure she keeps those nerves in check. A lot was expected of a little girl in eyeglasses, Morgan Hurd. But if things did not go her way, and that is where we, we will start as Riley McCusker gets ready. There is Morgan. She's actually going to start off today on vaulting. She really struggled on floor exercise, but did also, also did not do herself a solid on the vaulting event. Limped away a little bit after the landing. Scored only a 13.9 in day one. Double twisting, laid out Yurchenko. Maximum score, 15.4. And that was much better than the first day. Had so much more height and rotation in the air and cleaner landing as well. Absolutely. Well, this is her first competition of this magnitude. You would think that one day's experience means an awful lot. Yeah, you know, she competed at the classic competition a few weeks ago, which is the qualifier to the national championships. Just did a few events, so back to the all around here. And just really so much stronger all the way around on this vault. Little bit of form in the air towards the end. Big hop back on the landing, but just, you know, remarkably better. Yeah, you know, it, from the very beginning in night one, she kind of flubbed her round off a little bit, got a bad position on that table, couldn't get this kind of block, and had to really pike down and stung her ankle. She limped off the podium, but much better here. Since the Olympics a change in the code of points, the scores oh, yeah. essentially are going to be five tenths less than they were at that time. So if you did the same routine that you did in Rio, you wouldn't get the same score just by the rules. If your score is green, that means you've kept your deductions to a minimum. Yellow, you're starting to get in trouble. Red, not good. And she's good, 14.45. That's actually a pretty good score there. Only less than one point in deductions. And now the favorite coming in. What sets her apart, Nastia? 
Well, there's, it's everything about her, really. She's so confident on every single event, which we'll really see on the balance beam later. But this floor team, brand new floor team for her coming up, she is just, she has everything in the total package. She has the tumbling, she has the artistry, the flexibility, the power. And she has the mentor as well, Kim Zameskel. Her coach, 1992 Olympic team bronze medalist, also 1991 world champion in the all-around, one of the all-time greats, and has just a ton of little stars on her gymnastics team right now. And you know, last year she was really just the newbie of the team. She was the alternate for the Olympic Games, that Rio final five team. And this year has just had so much more confidence. She just turned 17. Her birthday, interestingly enough, is 8-8. That was the day of the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympics. And you know she took all that in. That was your time, Bastia. <laughs> and you know, I talked to her about that final five group, and she said it's definitely different because I miss them being here with me and cheering me on. But now I feel I'm one of them almost, just not quite as successful. Well, she can put that foot forward and claim a title here, a national all-around title. fun in that one great routine really playful you know had a couple of small little things missed a connection midway through on one of her tumbling passes but I love that routine I, I think it fits her so well yeah, and you can tell she loves it and really embraces it she says she runs off the energy that the crowd gives her so she loves having that big crowd out there not much for Kim's Meskel to say <laughs> look at Riley McCusker. She had a horrific fall at the American Cup and then really put it together night one here at the Nationals. Yeah, she has been up and down though. The American Cup, it was not good. She went to Italy with Team USA, was the top all-round finisher at the secret, or excuse me, the U.S. Classic just a few weeks ago. Really rough there as well, but was fantastic here on bars night one. Really low on that handstand, was supposed to connect it to this skill right here. And another bunch of big releases coming up. Beautiful release, and another one right here. In combination, transitions to the low. Well, this is impressive because not only is she hitting this routine, but she's hitting it after she struggled right at the beginning. And just the dismount left. <laughs> Pretty darn good. So we've got a gold, silver, and a bronze story today. We've got the national championship, and then we've got four spots, only four, to go to the world championships. And yeah, that won't be decided here tonight. They'll go off to 
a final selection camp at the training center where that team will be, of course, decided. But everything really counts here as well. And this is right at the top of the routine. This should finish exactly in the handstand right there. Her hand comes down. That's close to five tenths off of an angle deduction. And then miss that next connection going into it where she'll lose a little bit of bonus. Supposed to connect those two skills. But you know, she really struggled in training to earlier on in the week, especially on this skill. Had a kind of a scary fall, but not today. Beautiful. Dismount chest was a little bit low. But again, what a great start for Riley. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was uh, 10 feet away from her in that training session, and she landed in a heap. And, uh, you know, everybody took a deep breath, and her coach, Maggie Haney, went up to her and said, you okay? <laughs> and she got a yes, but it was a little scary. Great finish, though, for her with that routine. And she's just, again, has had injury after injury, and, and I think she's just, you know, talking to her and her coach and not quite ready. She just needs a little bit more time, more training, more numbers to get more consistent and confident. She had a 14.55 in night one. On floor exercise, Reagan Smith is in good shape, 14.35. And McCusker a tenth better than that. But because of the deductions, which you guys talked about, it's a cautionary 14.45. To the floor and from the parquets of Allentown, Pennsylvania, not far from Ariel, New Jersey, is Marzetta Frazier. Fourth all around after day one, which you know, I, I think was probably a pleasant surprise for Mars and her entire Parkhead organization. Great night of competition day one and said she'd be so happy if she could do the exact same thing on day two. So we are just getting started in the first rotation. So far, Kim Semeskel, one of the best ever, with Riley Smith, a lot to celebrate after the floor exercise performance. And celebrate they do, but a bigger one they hope is to come. The 2017 PNG Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by Pantene. Strong is beautiful. Gorgeous day to be doing anything outside, but we're inside. And a little bit of a cautionary score from Marzetta Frazier. Yeah, but two and a half tenths Pantene. better than she did night one. And yes, night one was really big for her. stay on the floor for Jordan Childs, who coming into this last night is in the top five. And she says that her favorite thing is being able to do things other people can't, like fly. And boy, can she fly. Her two first tumbling passes are just gigantic. Yeah. 
bounds and I believe both feet hit the ground. That would be three tenths off. Even with that small mistake, stepping out of bounds, that was an amazing routine, just full of so much power. You know, earlier this year, she missed out on making the team for the Italy competition, didn't make the at and American Cup, and so she really says that that has given her more motivation to push harder. Things were going so well. But this opening tumbling pass, it was not like this day one. This was so much higher, so much more power, beautiful position into an immediate split jump, and giving that, her some bonus. That's <laughs> the way you're supposed to do it. She actually rebounds out of it and ready for this tumbling run right here. Connection into a double back, holds on a little bit too long, hips in back of her, and that's one foot and two feet down, which is three-tenths of a point plus the hop. Still, I think she's going to get a better score than she got night one. We'll get her score as we bounce over to the beam. Ashton Locklear, who was announced as an alternate for the Olympics in Rio. She'd like to not be in that position again. And she had a great routine on the uneven bars night one, but on the balance beam, unfortunately, came off. Had a fall. Oh. Good save there. Yeah. I'm not sure she, not sure if she grabbed the, uh, the beam. Didn't it, look like it from here, but we'll have to see. And this is where she came off, night one. Layout, step out. Pretty good. Beautiful combination. Holds that leg up at the end of the aerial. And it was gorgeous all the way to the very end right there. And then a slight bobble. Just the dismount left here. Round off to a double back tuck. Really nice. And a little, little shaky right from the start. A few wobbles, but so much better than night one. And as I was saying, right from the beginning, here's that triple, what we call wolf turn. You see she starts Whoa. a little bit off. So let's see if she touched her hand. Nope. <laughs> wow, that was an that amazing That took a lot of balance. <laughs> amazing save. And a beautiful dismount. Sometimes she 
struggles on this a little bit. Not tonight. Gets really good bounce from the beam. Pretty good form in the air. Opens. And that right there, only a one-tenth hop. You know, I think any other time, if you're not competing just in training, just the automatic thing would be to touch your hand down. So that was very smart of her to well, really try to fight and save it. Now, the judges don't have the benefit of replay, do they? No, they don't. No, certainly not on the floor. So they could have seen it as a touch. They could have, but they're they're closer than we are. I think that I think she'll be okay. She's going to get a small deduction for it, but it's not the half point she would have lost if she grabbed the beam. Let's go back to Jordan Childs and see how the judges saw her floor exercise. And the number is in. It's a 13.7 with almost two of deductions. And back to Ashton Locklear. She gets a yellow score as well with one and a half deductions, 13.9. Reagan Smith, still the leader with three rotations to go for her. This is the PNG Gymnastics Championships on NBC. There's Allie Raisman, who was inducted into the Gymnastics Hall of Fame. And yesterday she spoke out about her disappointment with the way USA Gymnastics is handling the aftermath of a sexual abuse scandal surrounding former team doctor Larry Nasser, She said, I'm here to support my teammates because we got inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I'm here to support the girls who are competing. I love the Olympics. I love gymnastics. I love the sport, but I don't support how USA Gymnastics is handling everything right now. I would just like a little bit more accountability from USA Gymnastics and the USOC. I feel like there's a lot of articles about it, but nobody has said, this is horrible. This is what we're doing to change. In March, the CEO resigned, and last month, USA Gymnastics adopted a new gymnastics safe sport policy headed by Toby Stark in an effort to prevent this from happening again. We welcome Raisman's passion on this critical issue, USA Gymnastics said in a statement. As we have said, we are appalled by the conduct of which Larry Nasser is accused, and we are sorry that any athlete has been harmed during her or his gymnastics career. We are taking this issue head on and want to work with Ali and all interested athletes to keep athletes safe. We'll be back in Anaheim after this. In 2018, the world's best athletes compete on the world's biggest stage. The Winter Olympics coming in February to the networks of NBC Universal. Love that music. Pyeongchang, Korea. Here's your leader, Reagan Smith. She leads by 1.2, so she lost a tenth in the first rotation. Let's say she's a lock for the World Championships in October. That leaves three spots other than her. How many women here tonight are in play for those three, would you say? I think there's probably seven. Yeah, I, I agree. But we counted about six or seven. And, um, you know, again, it's not only this competition. They will go to a final selection uh, camp at the training center, and they'll have to compete there again. So what the selection committee is really looking for is that consistency all the way around, not just to do well at one competition. But we saw Riley McCusker there. We saw Jordan Childs. They are certainly in the conversation at this point. Riley McCusker, you know, before the meet began, day one, I would say a lot of people had a lot of doubts. But, uh, you know, not only did she rock day one, but I can't overemphasize how important I believe it was that she struggled at the beginning of bars and was able to come back and, and really do a phenomenal routine after that. Showed a lot of character. Marzetta Frazier. Or she can really look great. Absolutely, and of course, as we said, from that powerful longtime gymnastics contributors, the Parquet Organization in Allentown, Pennsylvania, former Olympians, Hope Spivey, Kristen Maloney, and so many other stars through that program. E.B. Price, who was remarkable as well. Scored a 14.3. Day one is actually capable of doing the Aminar, adding an extra half turn. Won't do that today. Really nice. You know, she reminds me a little bit of Alan Bauer on the men's side. You know, just slow, steady, and consistent routine after routine. We'll get her score, but let's go back to the journey this year of Riley McCusker. 
We last saw her in the American Cup, which is the most prestigious annual event in gymnastics on American soil. And she scared the bejesus out of everybody oh. when that happened. In the end, she was okay. But here at the National Championships, she did the very same dismount, which shows a lot of guts. And the results were undeniably better. Absolutely. Great connection with both feet on the beam. For more on her journey with her coach, let's go to Andrea. Well, Al, as you guys mentioned, Riley had such a rough week in training. I spoke to her coach, Maggie Haney, today, and she said there were plenty of tears on both sides all week long. They have not had that many competitions together, so they are still trying to figure out their relationship. Maggie asked Riley, what do you need from me? Now, with Lori Hernandez, it was all about distracting her from the competition, talking about somebody's shoes or nail color. For Riley, she's just learning how to push her buttons. She knows it's about simplifying everything. Maggie told me that her job now is to make sure that Riley doesn't overthink the competition, which is what happened at American Cup. And as we saw, that was a disaster. She was totally overwhelmed. It's a work in progress, Al, but Maggie thinks it's really working in the right direction. And she's back on that very same beam. This is very popular in women's gymnastics right now. There's the triple turn, and she'll do another one with two revolutions. Now, it's not my favorite skill, but the way oh, Riley does it, she really <laughs> does make it look beautiful. Yeah, about as, as good as it can be done. Abby Walker, Texas not just that skill, but every single movement she does, just every pose, every step, and every skill is beautiful execution. Really nice. She's capable of doing Another layout step out there. She has kind of pulled back to be a little bit more consistent. I think great decision. Excellent. Really good. Really confident. And that's exactly what they are looking for. She can train these routines all day long in training and has struggled a little bit pulling it through in competition, but so far here in, here in Anaheim, she has been so consistent and so confident. Good for them. So this may not look hard. Push the oh come on. Push the coffee table out of the way, and try to do that in your living room just one time around. And just imagine what it would feel like on four inches of equipment. And here's that dismount again. No issues today. Difficult dismount. A combination two back handsprings into a tuck double back. You look for her chest up on the landing. One step back. Talk about the relationship between coach and pupil. Yours was different because yours was, was your dad. Of course, but it really becomes, you end up spending more time with your coach than your actual parents. And so these coaches get to know you so well. And as we talked about, what works more for you as an athlete? You know, one thing works for somebody and might not work for the other person. So it really is about that experience and getting more, especially for Riley, getting more competitions under her belt. But Maggie has done a tremendous job with Riley, especially since that American Cup competition. Coming back, had a great showing at the Italy competition a few weeks after that, then went through some injuries. It's easy to imagine the relationship. It has to reach common ground. There's going to be tension. There's probably going to be disagreements. All right, our first look at Trinity Thomas, fifth after the first rotation which is exactly where she was coming into night one. She said her goal night is to, two, be, excuse me. Goal to be the best she can be, travel the world, and if I make a little history, that'd be an extra bonus. <laughs> 
That was excellent. So for every single skill, you're looking to land on top of the bar in a handstand. Okay. And of course, to catch the bar on the release moves. Beautiful dismount right here. Does wow. that like, like glass. Wow, gorgeous. You know, she said she's just really excited because it's so cool to think that I'm just like them, the seniors, and I'm not, not so little anymore. <laughs> Beautiful. Dismount, she just floats in the air and wham, like glue on the landing. And so what you're really looking for in the double layout is you want to keep your hips open all the way around. Sometimes it can be devalued, not given the full credit if you're not open, and that was just gorgeous. Oh, the stuck landings always make things look better. Is she in your mix? She's yeah, in mine. she absolutely is. Didn't have the best competition earlier in this year, but night one and today Come she on, has Ed. been looking great. All right, let's uh, recap some scores. First of all, Riley McCusker does well. One point off in deduction. That may sound like a lot, but that is really great. 14.5, green to go score, and Marzetta Frazier, a 14.55. That's good on vault. Very good score. Now back to the leader. She'll also do that Yurchenko with a double twist. All about the landing right here. Now I have to say, probably not as good as night one, but still nothing terrible. Just didn't quite get that rotation like she did. That's her coach, Chris Burdett, who's married to Kim Zameskel, but just doesn't get the same bounce that she typically does. A little bit soft, but look at this. This slide backwards, that's probably only a tenth and then another tenth. But they're gonna have a few more deductions throughout that vault, I would say. The piking down. Trinity Thomas, 14.35. It does take some getting used to this new code of points and what's good and what's not good. While that gymnastics was going on, Jordan Childs was on the vault. Third and place. She, and she can vault. She won night one. Doing that Aminar that was popularized by Michaela Maroney and then Simone Biles, among others. But tonight, comes up a little bit short, and you know, that was just a judgment call. This was a great and powerful vault. She's really going for the landing, which when you're facing forwards at the end, is really tricky. But great height, nice look in the air, and just puts her feet a little bit too far out in front. Well, there's always that fine line between really trying to stick your landing, especially on such a difficult vault like that, and really just making it to your feet. 1.7 deduction, so that's, that's a cautionary score. Back to Reagan Smith, that's a green to go score, 14.35. So she only has two more rotations to go to win this national championship. Riley McCusker into the picture here, looking toward a big future. She's got to stay in the moment. Back live in Southern California, Al Troutwig, Tim Daggett, Nastia Lucan, and Andrea Joyce. We'll hear from Simone Biles in a moment. But we stay in the moment here, Alana Shenakova.
a strange landing on that last tumbling pass, but. Looked like a ski jumper, the <laughs> telegraph landing. <laughs> Had a great qualifying meet at the US Classic, won the all around, and as we said, stumbled badly on the balance beam, but overall that was pretty strong for her. Okay, we'll get Shannon Krova's score in a moment. Going to 10. As far as we go for Plain City, Ohio's Shania Adams. She actually trains at Buckeye Gymnastics, the same gym as where Gabby Douglas did her training for the 2016 Olympic Games. Release right here, nicely done. Not the most difficult routine that you're gonna see, and that one right there, that's a big deduction. She was nowhere near the handstand upon completion. And was probably supposed to connect it to that skill, so she'll lose on the execution and the difficulty. Oh boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was very, very close to Ooh. hitting the bar. I think Tim and I both almost <laughs> jumped off our chair. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm shocked she didn't clip a toe on that. That mat is placed there so that you can land on it, and she didn't even hit it. I think, you know, sometimes when you're tired, you end up pulling a little bit too long. She does this giant to try to get a lot of speed, but then just, oh boy, look at look at that. Whoa. And not only were her oh, toes close, but her, her face was a little close to the bar too. You know, and, and that was close enough to hit the bar. She just, her rotation and how she was twisting matched up so that her body could pass basically without hitting the bar, but that, that was close. Kitty Car Carpenter there. And Alana Shenikova's score, almost two points in deductions, 13.3. All right, it's time now to hear from some gymnastic royalty who may reign again, but last August in Rio, she dominated. Floor exercise, and true to the Olympic slogan, she was swifter, higher, and stronger than anyone else. Everything Simone Biles did had a certain flair to it. Five medals, four of them gold, she's with Andrea Joyce. Al, we've been talking about the people watching these nationals having Simone withdrawal. What is it like for you, though, to be on the sidelines? Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice. It is a little bit weird and awkward for me because I've been competing in this meet for like six years now, so it's like, uh, but I'm happy that I'm not here tonight. You've won the last four, by the way. So you said in Rio over and over and over, my main mission is to enjoy the moment. One year later, as you look back, what did you enjoy most? Oh my gosh, I think spending time with friends, family, doing things that I wouldn't be able to do while I was training and just taking the time off, find myself and like doing fun things. Not being the queen with all that weight around your neck? <laughs> yes, yes, it's a lot easier, but it's, yeah. <laughs> so you told me the other day that you're back in the gym. Where are you, how's that going? And can you see yourself back here soon on the competition floor? Um, I don't have a set date on which competition I'm gonna return to. I do wanna turn to competing because I love it so much, but um, the beginning is, is uh, it's okay. You said you thought you were a little weak. I am weak, I swear, like it's hard, or it's harder than I thought at least. <laughs> Finally, your teammate Allie made some comments about the handling of the sexual abuse allegations. Your thoughts? Yes, well, I think we all support, the final five all support what Allie is doing. All right, thank you so much, Simone. Good luck back in the gym, and I know you got a lot of folks cheering for you to get back out there. Thank you so much. All right, Al? Okay, a lot to think about there. Shani Adams score a 13.2. We talked earlier about what Allie Raceman has said, and we gave you USA Gymnastics response. You were part of USA Gymnastics. What do you think about this? 
Well, <laughs> to be completely honest, I, I had a different experience with USA Gymnastics and had nothing but um, an incredible career and, um, you know, unfortunately don't have that same experience. But, you know, they definitely have a huge platform, so hopefully they'll take that platform and, and put it to good use. We just want what's best for all of the athletes. Everybody, I believe, on the floor wants that, and a lot of changes have been made and are being implemented, and I think they're going to help. And we go to the uneven bars. Adams, by the way, got a 13.2, so that's that's not what she wanted. Here's Morgan Hurd trying to reestablish herself near the top of the standings. She's actually capable of doing a lot more than she's going to show on the uneven bars today. And she is coming back from an elbow surgery. So as you said, Tim, she can definitely do a little bit of a harder routine. Good fight on that. She was a little close to the bar on that transition from high to low, but did exactly what you're supposed to. Don't telegraph it to the judges. She has a beautiful line. A little short on that last handstand. Really nice routine. Makes it look effortless. It doesn't look labored at any point. She's capable of adding another full twist to that dismount. So it's a full twisting double back somersault. She does a half turn on the first flip, a half turn on the second flip. But as I mentioned, she's actually capable of doing an entire another flip. There's the first half turn, another half turn. We call it flipping and twisting at the same time. Well, the music tells you the second rotation is done, which brings us to halftime. Reagan Smith still on top of the list, looking for her first ever national championship. Here in Anaheim, Riley McCusker is forcing the issue. What was once a 1.3 lead for Reagan Smith, looking for her first national title, is now down to a still formidable but lower 1.05. Jordan Childs is in third. Back for the third rotation after this. Some of the fans here are just cuter than others. Just in case it gets too loud, he's protected, <laughs> and it looks like he's been to Disneyland. <laughs> what a face. Here's Abby Walker from Vidalia, Georgia, famous for their onions. Check her out in warm-up. This is really <laughs> interesting. Reagan Smith is tiny, and look at she, the thing that's so cute. She's about six inches shorter than the low bar, but she actually bends over a little bit like she might hit it. <laughs> well, you never know one day. Yeah, right. Not today. First time seeing her. Well, right to the handstand there. That's exactly what the judges are looking for. job once again another wow rock solid handstand and that is so cool if you see that from the side it's like she has got a long way to travel from one bar to the other and that is why we showed you Abby Walker So, like I said, she's so tiny, and it makes this skill. It's called a pack salto, a back laid out somersault. She has got to change zip codes. Look at the height and how far away that bar is. Awesome. I saw her do that in training, and I had to go right down on the floor and check it out up close. Kim was laughing at me. You got it, Trent. Score in a moment. We go to the beam, and Trinity Thomas, who was so impressive in the second rotation. Now on balance beam, for prestige, Trinity Thomas. She said in 2016 she made the junior national team, and it was so great because she got to train with her idols like Simone and Gabby at the training camps in Houston, Texas.
first test right here. Really nice one arm back handspring into that layout step out. Beautiful lines, very solid. The whole entire routine so far, showing lots of confidence. And I'll tell you what, you cannot fake confidence on the balance beam. The moment you lose it, everything starts getting shaky. Question yourself. Dismount right here. Double back and wow. Little bit of a, <laughs> that punch on that dismount looked a little strange, <laughs> but she was able to pull that around and stuck the landing. And here's that dismount. So take a look, might be a little hard to see in slow motion, but take a look at her round off. And when she punches, it just looked, yeah, can't quite tell there, but watching it live was a little bit and that's amazing she stuck that yeah. with that body position. You know, because she just didn't quite get that punch yeah. in the air and the rotation. We'll have our score in a moment as she hydrates a little bit. Abby Walker is given a rather low 12.9. We'll discuss as the PNG Gymnastics Championships continue. Standings are staying pretty much the same, but Trinity Thomas helps herself out with a 14.2 on the balance beam. In third place after the second rotation was Jordan Childs. And she really had an event vaulting where she could set herself apart, but sat it down on that very difficult vault. Position. Beautiful release moves. And I like this right here. Toe on and she'll do a full pirouette and connect it right into what's called a ginger. You did that, Nastia, remember? Sure did. <laughs> Years ago. Not that long ago. <laughs> and that was good because she showed the selection committee that even with a mistake on one of her best events, she can come back and still be mentally strong enough to turn the page and do a great bar routine. That's her headed back in the right direction. From Minnesota, Abby Paulson. It's our first look at her. Where does she fit into the mix? Well, you know, I'll tell you what she does is she's just a, a steady kid and, you know, can be relied upon in a lot of different areas. She's from the same gym as Maggie Nichols, who was part of that 2015 team gold at the World Championships, and she also won a bronze on floor exercise, has had an amazing career so far at the University of Oklahoma. Really solid. Now watch this, this is really cool. Layout step out, two in a row. Oh, baby. So beautiful. Love it. Her dismount, just a single flip, but two and a half twists. Whew. That was close. So she actually, I don't know if she got that all the way around, and the judges, they are looking to see if the twist was completed before her feet hit the floor. But, but here's that combination that is just so difficult, a side aerial into two back layout step outs, three skills in a row. Gorgeous. 
and the dismount. So she should be facing forward exactly as her feet are hitting. And yeah, I think they're going to give her that. It was it was close, but you know, at an international competition, the judges are a little bit more strict. So what might be given here, maybe not given at a World Championships or an Olympic Games. Let's go back to Jordan Shiles. A 14 even. Considering the ductions, good to go. Hopefully she can hold her spot. We continue in the third. Thursdays this fall, the 16-time Emmy winner is back as part of a big new night of comedy. Will and Grace returns Thursdays this fall on NBC. Gorgeous day in Southern California. In 08, Sean Johnson meant the United States didn't have the best Olympic gymnasts, they had the best two. She went with Nastia Lukin head to head and had a silver medal, but eventually Sean Johnson would get her gold, winning it on the balance beam. That was quite the Olympics to remember. And here she is, four-time Olympic medalist. Nastia, what were you thinking with that hug? <laughs> you know, it was such an amazing experience to be able to go into the Olympic Games together. We were actually roommates, um, obviously remain the best of friends, but we were the first American duo to do that and go one, two, and um, the Beijing Olympics were just incredible. Getting set for the competition to continue on the floor. That is Jade Carey, our first look at her. Paulson, minutes ago on the balance beam, got a 14.1. We'll see where it all stacks everybody up when the third rotation is over in just a few minutes. And so remember, it's not just a national championships. This is also going to be part of the puzzle on who makes the world championship team. And Jade actually can help Team USA and make them a contender, certainly on vaulting, and possibly even here. Those two events are critical for her to show the committee that yes, I should go to Montreal. Gorgeous. Wow, really, really great. And I'll tell you, not many people can come into the same conversation as having the power similar, not quite, of a Simone Biles, but she is tremendous. Nasty, I'm thinking about the depth of this group. Yeah, I mean, when we say there's six or seven girls out there, maybe more, that have the potential to compete at the World Championships, and not just to compete and make the team, but contentions to get a World Championship medal. Now, those World Championships will be seen on the NBC networks, and undoubtedly on the screen then will be Reagan Smith. She is still in first place by more than a point. And I'll tell you, she is so vastly improved from one year to the other on the uneven bars, doing a lot of these inside skills where she scoots her feet between her hands. Those are very difficult. Even more so difficult connecting all these skills in a row. Another release. Oh, was actually supposed to connect that one, but she'll lose some bonus points, but 
It was a good decision. I don't think she could have pulled it off. It was too close to the bar. Well, it was very good, but it, it's not what she can do at this point in time. And, you know, it's funny because she's powerful, but she doesn't let herself be patient enough on her landing. She's always, you know, standing up a little too quickly. And so she did that and didn't just have one hop, but had a couple of them. And here's that combination. So you see her, her feet go through the bar, not putting them on, which makes it a lot more difficult. And she'll do a 360, a full pirouette here, and immediately into another one of those. Inside circle. A little bit of a, you know, her legs aren't completely together, toes a little flex, but again, you really can only see that when we're slowing it down like this. Absolutely. I love watching the handwork during the slow-mos. Subtle but cool. Here's Morgan Hurt. And this is a great routine. She's very powerful. And right off the top, she'll do one of the skills that I still can't believe gymnasts can make it a consistent element. This is a backflip, and she'll do a complete full twist. Very nice. She just moves on the balance beam as if she's just on the floor exercise. Had a really rough floor exercise night one. She's certainly in the conversation, but I believe the committee Larry Lucan, they're looking for better consistency out of her. They want to know she can always make that routine. So far today, it's been pretty darn good. Oh. She really tumbles on beam. Gets a huge bounce, typically on the dismount. Awesome. Big step forward, but that was huge, man. Yeah, again, just going for that stick on the dismount, rushed it a little bit. Same with Reagan, you know, just need to be a little bit more patient. Okay, very happy. Okay, Jade Carey with a good looking 14.4. And here you go, Reagan Smith as the door is just slightly open. Be careful, the yellow caution is out. 14.1 with 1.7 in deductions. Oh, no, and Riley McCusker is on floor. Trying to take advantage of that. Scored a 13.9 in day one on floor exercise.
yellow flag goes up. Only one foot, only one tenth. You know, that's, that's not terrible for Riley. Yes, not the routine she was hoping to do, maybe expected to do, but again, coming off these injuries, not having that time to really train and get those numbers in. She just needs some more training and, and more routines with consistency. <laughs> Morgan Hurd. 13.65. It's a little harsher than I thought it was going to be. You know, I just uh, didn't think it was that error prone. Marzena Frazier, fourth after the second rotation. She would love to get on the podium and grab a medal. Looking for those handstands. Oh boy. Sometimes connects those two elements together. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, she is one tough competitor. She herself has been battling some injury. Had a bone bruise on her knee that she's coming back from. But that was a very good routine. Great yeah. level of difficulty. She is a cool customer, I'll tell you. Now on speed, Fortune of America. Leo Boy, do you her. ever like that as a coach? You know, because some athletes, they can do it in practice. There is longtime coach Donna Strauss from the Parquet organization. Robin Netwell there as well, another coach that has been with the program for years. And Riley McCusker does not take advantage of Reagan Smith's low score because she gets two points in deductions and gets a 13.2. So Reagan Smith still has a formidable lead heading into the fourth and final rotation that could give her the national championship. Reagan Smith, another great gymnast from Texas. She has increased her lead to 1.95. The balance beam is the final thing that stands in her way to a national championship in Anaheim, California. Back after this on NBC. Well, there's a gold medal row. That is the final five. Gabby Douglas, Ali Raisman, Madison Koshin, Simone Biles, and Lori Hernandez supporting the next group of gymnasts. They're all taking the year off. We'll see what the future brings. Simone Biles has told us she is back in the gym. Doesn't feel strong yet. Meanwhile, the Marta Caroli era is over. That man is now running the show, Valeri Lukin. And Nasty, of course, he's your dad. How do you balance that one out? <laughs> he is, but you know, that's kind of the way my life has always been. Once, when I was competing on that competition floor in the gym, he was just my coach. When we went home, he was just my dad. So this isn't really unusual for me because when I look out on, in the arena on the competition floor and see him, he's just the head coach. The only difference is we might leave this arena tonight and go to dinner together as a family. How come I never get invited? <laughs> <laughs> Got to be nice, Tim. <laughs> well, meanwhile, the standings include a big lead for Reagan Smith. But the interesting thing, that's a really big lead. I mean, something really, really bad would have to happen. Anyway, McCusker is in second place. She might be a little vulnerable with Frazier and Childs both tied. So that means there's two chances to maybe catch her. Yeah. Anyway, it's all going to develop in the fourth rotation. Yeah. Mars Frazier actually has over a point in potential score ahead of Riley McCusker. Riley's going to vault where she is watering down. It has a maximum of 14.4, and Mars, as I said, has a maximum of 15.5. Well, you saw that deep breath from McCusker. So much tension, the end in sight. Boy, 
Not too many of us were thinking silver medal at the Nationals at, after the American Cup. You know, probably not, but just by watching her in training, when she has good trainings and good competitions, when she hits, she is very, very good. And we'll start off on the uneven bars with Ashton Locklear. Has she accomplished what she would want to do here? You know, she had night one on the uneven bars. She was great, and she'll have to be great again, not doing her full difficulty here at these national championships. But, but she's coming back, and so she's not doing those inside stalters like that one right there. And she's got a month, and she tells me that she's been able to do it in training. I have seen her do it, posted it on her Instagram. But just beautiful lines. Every single thing she does. Gorgeous toe oh, point. Beautiful. Just a small little hop on the landing, but that has the makings of championship material. Not going to bring in the biggest score. It might, actually. That was pretty darn clean. But relative to the world, she needs those skills back to be competitive. And I think she'll get them. Here's Jordan Childs on the balance beam where a lot can go wrong. We've seen that for years. She's in a tie for third. So if she wants to challenge the silver medal of McCusker, she has got to nail this. Oh boy, oh, oh my. Cannot believe what she just did there. <laughs> and she, she can't believe what she just did there either. That was all improvisation. She's just spinning. And it almost looked like she couldn't even stop herself. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking around at the coaches on the floor and some of the other athletes and they're all just blown away. <laughs> She was supposed to stay down low the entire time. Well, after that interesting start, she has definitely Kind of put that beside her. Great beam routine so far. Just the dismount right here. Nice double pike and what a landing. Well, let's check out these reactions. I think I heard her say I have no idea what happened. I, I'm sure she doesn't. <laughs> because she's supposed to stay in this position right here the whole time she gets off balance. She stands up and she's just she keeps turning that she didn't come off the bench. If someone tried to replicate that a million times, they wouldn't be able to pull that off. <laughs> like I said, all the coaches on the floor just mesmerized. You know, I don't even know if she's ever done that, actually trying to do it, just a triple turn like that. Maybe she has, but that was, um, <laughs> well, was you called can't, a good save. <laughs> you can't get a bonus for creativity. Locklear, you saw 14.4 on the uneven bars. Back to Jade Carey, who was so good on the floor. Highest score on Florex the entire weekend, and she's even better here on vault. Very good job. A lot of gymnasts would have taken another step on that, but she did exactly what she needed to. She was patient on the landing. You know, this is a difficult vault. This is one of two vaults, so she'll do another one. This is a double twist. Great body position in the air. A little bit of a pike down at the end, and you see her foot out of bounds on that line, so she'll have some deduction. Night one, though, on her second vault. This is that Aminar. 
like Simone Biles did. It was a great vault, but just put her feet too far in front of her. And you know, the interesting thing was she came right off the floor and had to start warming up vault immediately, had no time to even catch her breath. So the first score will count towards tonight. The second vault is essentially saying, I want in in the World Championships. And she's, at this point, she's definitely in the conversation with, like I said, the highest floor score of both competitions thus far. And this combination of vaults, these two vaults, are world class and world medal potential, absolutely. Just needs a little more rotation on this one, the night one. Oh my goodness. What a fight on that. You know, we watched her in training all week and I didn't ever see her do one like that. I don't know if she's just going for that stick. You know, she does have so much height and rotation. Doesn't quite get it turned around. Yeah, yeah she really had a, an amazing block and didn't really get the rotation. The flipping started as much as she needed to. Shinakova. This is her strongest event and where she could potentially contribute and be a factor in the medals. Maybe not the medals, but oh. this is big, big mistake. She had such a great qualifying event at the U.S. Classic, but she took extra swings. And every time your body goes one way, comes back the other, they're all deductions. Just way too close to the bar on that release skill that was supposed to connect from the high bar down to another release to the low bar. She had to take those swings, which really was an error also. She should have just done a kip cast again and continued on with the routine. Okay. Jordan Childs in a tie in third. Okay. I think the judges were perplexed as to what to do for that. And you know what? They had to come up with a value for that element. And I'm not sure, she thought she only did three total turns. I'm not sure if she did four. I believe she did actually <laughs> do four. <laughs> okay, so she comes out of that all right. Meanwhile, Carrie, first vault, 14.4. Second vault, 14.35. And this is Riley McCusker's last go at it. She's on the vault trying to clinch her silver medal. You know, she's going to do a little bit of a easier vault than what we've seen from some of the other competitors. But very clean, beautiful body position in the air, gets a lot of height. So really, she just wants to try to really get that landing and try to get as close as sticking it to possible. She needs a she needs better than a 13.6 to stay in that silver medal spot. And that would be really hard because this, like I said, this vault has a maximum score of 14.4. She's, she's capable. Wow, she this, does, is, this is going to be close. Yeah, she's got she's to do what she usually does with great form, but then she's got to nail the landing. And it was pretty good. It was, it was very pretty good. good. And now it's, it's really up to the judges because we've seen them all weekend long. Sometimes they're a little bit more strict, sometimes not as much. But the thing that she has going for her is that beautiful body position in the air. Shenikova gets knocked 12.8. But right now, what is the number four McCusker? We'll have that after this as we head to the finish line in the P&G Gymnastics Championships. All night long, Riley McCusker has been in second place, and now she's not. The vault she needed was better than a 13.8, and she gets a 13.4. She's now in third. Jordan Childs is in second. And coming up in a moment, Marzetta Frazier could not McCusker off the podium. But now to the leader, Reagan Smith. I remember saying it so many times, maybe for Simone Biles. Okay, maybe not her best night, but she's still crushing the field. Yeah, absolutely. And she basically, if she's remotely clean, she is going to 
win a national title. And, you know, I say it every time at this point. You know, there are a lot of things you dream of when you're a little gymnast. You want to go to the Olympics, win a gold medal, go to a world championships, win an American Cup. But you also want to be able to say absolutely that I am the U.S. national all-around champion. And that is right within her grasp. Big tumbling combination here. Gorgeous. Just beautiful, but coming up right here, that same skill we saw from Morgan Hurd, standing back with a full twist. Ooh. Wow, her foot completely slipped off the beam, but she was able to hold it on. And just rock solid so far. Reagan kept herself relevant, was balance beam in the 2016 conversation. If she gets through this, she is the national champion right there, Reagan Smith. American Cup, check. National Championship, check. <laughs> Montreal, here she comes. Just relief knowing that it's all done. Thanks. What's with the one leg landings, though? Yeah, that was amazing, though, that she stayed on that back with a fall. Morgan Hurt, much better night two than night one. The experience coming through. But this is where she needs to redeem herself because she started great with a huge double twisting double somersault and then it went all bad from that point on. So far, so good. better than night one. Floor is a strength of hers and she showed why. Great tumbling, just a little bit off on some of the landings, but. And you know, she even has more to come because that wasn't her most difficult floor routine. But again, just getting back out there in competition after her injury, that was a good little redemption from night one. Big so finish good. for yeah, so Reagan Smith. That'll clinch this national championship with ease. 15.05 with just over a point in deductions. It almost looks like a 15 had gone into extinction in gymnastics. But that was great. So we 
have now one last bit of drama, and it involves this woman from the Parquets, Marzetta Frazier. If she can somehow pass Riley McCusker, she could go home with a bronze medal. Big deal. She needs better than a 14.0. We have seen people struggle on this element, and that got a little funky, too. And again, there's, there's very few people that can just do that skill so well. Nice. So that 14.2 has been achieved by a number of gymnasts here tonight. Just seems a little shaky. I have to say, ending on the balance beam on the second day of competition is always a little more nerve wracking. This mount. Oh boy. Now this is gonna be tough because there were just a few too many minor mistakes throughout that routine. And the judges are going to be looking at every single element. Yeah, I don't think that she's gonna do that. I think that it's going to stay exactly the way it is now for the podium. But I'll tell you what though, she still did herself a major solid here at these championships. Okay, so here's the deal. Better than a 4.0 to move into third. Better than a 14.2 to move into second. I love you. She just said to Donna Strauss, I love you. <laughs> okay. Very nice young lady. All of these kids are so, you know, such quality individuals. Eye to eye, but Reagan's on the mat. Okay, I don't know. We might be tied. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> no. Then we're fine. I know. We got the team. Jordan said we might be tied. <laughs> Was that a <laughs> Is that bad? Yeah. She didn't do it. She gets a 13.25, and she's going to miss by a fair margin, almost a point. So it's Jordan Childs in second to Reagan Smith, and then McCusker is going to get the bronze for third. Well, there was a time tonight when I'm not sure Jordan Childs was thinking about a medal here. Yeah, well, after she sat her ball down, I'm sure she was very disappointed, but she's runner-up. But once again, the bulk, or a, a number of these girls will travel back to Houston, Texas when we get a little closer to the World Championships that begin the beginning of October, and they will have a national team camp and selection, which is a very grueling process, as you know, Nastia. Yeah. Still some gymnastics to come here. Second look at Abby Walker, who was pretty good on the uneven bars. And this is a beautiful mount right here, the same one as her coach, Kim Zameskel, did. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh boy, and there's another. another. One. Yep. She didn't finish it. Dropped the foot down a little bit too soon. Had to bend the knee. That was very nice, though. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. And this is where you really, as a coach, just want them to to get their head together because she's got an acrobatic dismount to do and see gymnast after gymnast looking so great on beam sometimes you forget that it is really hard got to get her feet down on the beam on this secure so that she can rebound enough to get up in the air and she does great finish there Thomas could pull off something. It would be a, a, a huge number these days, 14.7 or a 14.5 for third. Yeah, I think the highest score on floor exercise was Jade Carey with a 14.4 all weekend long. But Trinity has been doing a phenomenal job. Beautiful looking gymnast and got a lot of power of her own as well. Well, that was definitely a great routine for Trinity in a great day of competition, really proved herself, but unfortunately that's not gonna be quite enough to land on the podium. Well, we'll see if the judges agree in a moment, but right now we go to Andrea Joyce with a very happy, I'm sure, Reagan Smith. Absolutely, Al. You might remember earlier this year, Reagan said that she wanted to kick butt in 2017. You won the American Cup, and now you're standing here with your first national championship. Can you describe what this moment is like? Um, it feels amazing just to um, feel like all my hard work has paid off. Um, it feels amazing to be here and competing with all these girls. You were the favorite, the heavy favorite. You were in the headlines all week. Some people wilt under that spotlight. Why does that bring out the best in you? Um, it just makes me feel like have a great energy and I love the crowd so and I love like intention so it makes me feel like so special and yeah. Well your, co your coach told me, Kim told me that she thought she was gonna have to get the hook to take you off the floor because you were soaking up the crowd so much. Yeah, that was a really fun moment to be in. All right, well we expect we'll see you at World so congratulations. Thank you so much. Al? Well that's what you're supposed to do if you can through the pressure, have fun. Looked like Reagan Smith did that.
The 2017 P&G Gymnastics Championships have been brought to you by Pantene. Strong is beautiful. Now ride awaits. All right, the final results, it was a blowout in the end. Reagan Smith wins by 3.4. Jordan Childs, remember she sat down in the vault and she's going to get a silver medal in a moment. Riley McCusker hangs on to the bronze medal. Trinity Thomas needed a 14.5. She got a 14.2, so it was close, but it was three tenths that put her off the podium. Now, the question is, how does this world championship puzzle get put together? Yeah, well, that young lady is without a doubt gonna make that team unless she's injured, you know, so, but th there were a lot of athletes that showed themselves and showed that they can contribute and are medal contenders. And when you think about it, Nastia, the reason they're only four going, the United States has been so dominantly good that the other countries, for the most part, can't keep up with that depth. <laughs> Yeah, and the year after the Olympic Games, it's always just an individual world championship, so no team competition. But there will be that all-around finals, just like super important. Reagan has a chance to get an all-around medal, potentially a gold. So there's a lot at stake in a few weeks. 0.65 in this competition, but she wins it by 3.4. Reagan Smith, congratulations. Remember, the World Championships in October for Montreal can be seen on the NBC networks. Coming up next on NBC, it's American Ninja Warrior. For our entire NBC sports crew here in Anaheim, California, I'm Al Troutwick for Tim Daggett, Nastia Lukin, Andrea Joyce, Reagan Smith, Riley McCusker, Jordan Childs, your medalists here in California at the Honda Center.